Hey y'all, I'm here. So I figured I'd try out one of those distro review things that all the cool kids are doing. And figured a good first one to look at would be this interesting beginner-friendly distro called Source Mage. So, looking at the website, sourcemage.org, you can see that the main focus is the distro news. So, leaving Freenode, forums are up, a couple stable releases. Then off to the side here, you got some statistics from OpenHub. Couple standard links about news, download, y you can read. Search bar that I'm guessing is for searching the website. Then off to the left, a couple more useful links, including new to source mage, which I am. So let's look here. So it gives a bit of an intro to it. So it's for people who really want control over their systems and want to understand better how things work. So pretty much for prime candidates for switching to Linux. It is source-based, as all Linux distros should be. And with how well-known Gen 2 is, they did feel like it was worth their while to make a page comparing and contrasting the two. Their focus is on software freedom and returning choice to the administrator, which is a pretty standard goal in the Linux world. Although, especially new converts from Windows or Mac OS or wherever should note that the main repos or main grimoire only has open source software, so if you need stuff like NVIDIA drivers, Steam, or Discord, you'll need to go to Z Rejected, which the source mage devs don't officially maintain. And there's a bit going into the package manager and install methods and such. They've been told that they're one of the most friendly IRC channels, so that's always good to see. Nothing worse than when you're looking for help and someone just tells you to get out of there or whatever. And they also go over some basic terminology, which will help for installing software and such. So spell is basically an install script. They use sorcery for some configuration stuff. Cast to install. Dispel to uninstall. Gaze to get information, like searching for packages or reading package descriptions. Then scribe for controlling grim grimoires like stable, testing, etc. Then installation, I think they mentioned on the new page that, like the new to source mage page, that there is typically a friendlier installer, but that would be from the ISO or flash drive, which both of those are marked as outdated, so I'm just going to go for the Chirut install, shouldn't be too difficult. And it goes over what the Chirut image is and how to install from it. 
So it starts by recommending a few ISOs that you could grab. It says that pretty much any Linux distros ISO should do. I'm going to be doing this in a VM from Avoid ISO, and I will start by noting a couple things that if you go for the minimal ISO, you will need to install on there. So then if you're installing on bare metal, it goes over a couple ways for how to prepare the bootable media. If it's a flash drive, Rufus should be fine for burning the ISO to that. And then for actually booting, if you're on bare metal, pretty much just start hitting F keys early in boot until one of them brings up something helpful. I think with a lot of modern pre-built, F12 is typically a safe first guess. Next it goes over how to download the root image, which you should be doing from that live USB or CD or whatever. And it includes a link to the downloads page and mentions that you should probably use 0.63 test because the others listed are just too old. So first three commands here should only be needed if you don't already have the network set up on there. Then this wget command points to an older root tarball. So just over on the downloads page. Scroll down to root images as 64-bit and 32-bit. And if you're doing this from that live environment, then you can just click the download link. Otherwise, if you have a shared clipboard, copy the link and paste it in and just put wget in front or hover over it so that you can read the URL and just type it by hand which is a tedious enough process that I did that in advance to save time. And I mentioned that you'd have to install a couple additional things if you're using the minimal void ISO. So that's this command down here, xbps install dash sy, that's capital S, and this pair of letters just tells it to update its mirror lists and then install wget so you can actually download this and xz so you'll be able to extract it later. So then once you got that downloaded, it's just a matter of partitioning. These instructions mention fdisk and or parted. I personally think that cfdisk is a bit friendlier, so that's what I'm going to be using. And it notes that on UEFI, the first partition is usually FAT32 formatted, usually the system partition, so they recommend just leaving that untouched. I'm going to just be partitioning for legacy boot, but aside from that one system partition and the partition table, which if you're going for an already partitioned disk, it probably won't warn you about. Those should be largely the same. I'm just going to run cfdesk. If it prompts you with this, gpt is what you want for UEFI, dos for legacy boot. And there's all sorts of fun stuff you can do with partitioning, but for simplicity's sake, 
I'm just going to go with one partition for everything. So that was just enter a couple times. And once that's set, just arrow over to right down at the bottom. Hit enter. Type yes. Hit enter again. Then arrow over to quit. If you want to make sure this took, just LSBLK. If you're on bare metal or maybe VirtualBox, I don't remember, then your disk is probably going to be SDA and then SDA 1, 2, 3, etc. For KVM based stuff, like I'm using VDA, VDA 1, 2, 3, etc. is normal. Then it also mentions how to make sure that these are formatted the way you want. So just mkfs dot whatever file system type. If you're not sure, ext4 is generally a safe bet. So mkfs dot x4 slash dev slash in my case vda1. The next step is mounting the partitions and these instructions are showing how to do it at slash mnt slash drive and I'm just going to go with that because deviating from it would just make my life more difficult for no tangible gain. So mkdir slash mnt slash drive. Then mount slash dev slash vda1 in my case. You might have something else for the root partition. Slash mnt slash drive. And then if you have other partitions, or like swap or anything, then you would mount those in the appropriate places and swap on for the swap. And it looks like right now it's just... the instructions are just making directories for whatever there are partitions for. So then I'm just going to do one more lsblk. And you can see that now VDA1 is listed as being mounted at slash mnt slash drive, which is as it should be. So I'll just cd into there. tar x for extract, v for verbose. I don't remember what j is, that might just be for calling xz or whatever, f because we're giving it a file, then just wherever you save that tarball to, which as long as you get the beginning of the name, you can just hit tab to complete the rest. And then extracting this is going to take a little bit, so just gonna pause recording until that's done. Right, looks like that finished extracting. So let's see what's next. Right, so just a couple standard mounts for getting ready to root in. So mount dash dash bind slash dev slash mnt slash drive slash dev. Make sure that I typed that right. Looks like. And 
then up arrow to edit that, and next up is slash sys, slash mnt slash drive slash sys. Mount dash t proc none slash mnt slash drive slash proc. Then mount the other one dash t dev pts slash mnt slash drive slash dev slash pts. Helps if I remember to put that none in there. Now root slash mnt slash drive. And gonna just echo dollar path to see if it matches what they want it to be. So user local s bin, user local bin, s bin bin, user s bin, user bin. That is hilariously close to exactly backwards from what they want. I'm gonna say it's probably fine, and if I end up regretting this, I'll just put some on screen text saying that it was not fine. So yeah, set the root password, and it does note that if you don't have a root password, it doesn't mean you can just log in with an empty one, it means that you cannot log in as root. So passwd root, and looks like it has a five character minimum, and I don't know whether it requires a combination of uppercase, lowercase, and numbers, or just prefers that I do one. So let's see if it takes this. Nope. <laughs> Wait. It might, actually. Okay, so got a nice strong password for root on this. And also you may have noticed that there weren't like asterisks or anything coming up as I typed it. That is completely normal. So make sure you know what you're typing. So yeah, now setting up network and host name. Gonna start with host name because that's easy and actually documented. So for the host name, if this is just like a virtual machine or your home computer and you don't have a super fancy home network set up, then you can put basically whatever you want here. I generally like to have my host names be just little jokes related to the distro name or package manager name or whatever. So since this is source mage, I'm just gonna name this for a pretty well-known Fate Stay Night character, Tosakarin. That goes to slash Etsy slash hostname, right? Yep. And then default domain. With the super simple setup I mentioned earlier, this shouldn't matter. This is another place where I'll just have some on-screen text if I end up regretting that later. And I think I will take a look at slash Etsy slash network slash interfaces just to see... And I don't actually know what text editors are installed in here, so I'm just going to see 
does nano exist? <laughs> Which doesn't exist? That's nice. Okay, nano does exist, so if you're a beginner, that is the text editor that I would recommend using. I'm going to be using VI, just I'm going to not be using VI as Vim here. I'm going to be using Nano along with you, I guess. Okay, so looks like just delete the pound signs to uncomment these. I don't actually want a static IP, so I'm just gonna save and exit this for now because I don't think you can background nano. I remember trying that somewhere before. And I think it was man interfaces. Yes, that. Okay, so looks like replacing static with DHCP is what I want. And quite possibly what most of you are going to want as well. So yeah, DHCP, if you don't know, is... I think it stands for like Dynamic Host Client Protocol or something. And it's just how you get an IP address if you don't have a static one. So yeah, Control x to exit. Y to save, enter because we're writing the same file, and let's see what's up next. Oh yeah, DNS server is in slash etsy slash resolve.conf. If you already have things working, so if you're not in a fancy graphical UI where you can just bring up another terminal, Alt and then right or left will bring you to another TTY. Then just sign in. On the void one, it gives you the logins right at the top. If you log in as root on void, I would recommend immediately typing bash because dash is kind of painful for interactive use. Then assuming you have working internet, just cp-v slash etsy slash resolve.conf slash mnt slash drive slash etsy slash You actually don't even need to put resolve.conf at the end, so yeah, that just copies over your presumably working resolve.conf from the live environment over to this new install. That is the quick and dirty way of doing that. So now, setting up the FS tab. Snano slash Etsy slash FS tab. Okay, looks like it has some defaults. So the proc line, dev PTS line, and tempfs for dev sh shim or S whatever shm is short for. Those three you probably want to keep. These first two you might want to comment out and replace with lines that actually reflect your setup. And I don't actually remember how to... Okay, cut current line. Control K, looks like that's what I want. So Control K, looks like Control U is paste, so... Sort of tweak that. So mine is VDA1 for root. Yours might be SDA1 or SDA2. I did not go for XFS, so I went for extend 4. No A time is generally a good default. 
if not having last access time breaks anything, which I think I've heard it might for certain email clients, then just change that to default. Snatch exit, save, write that file. This looks like we're going to be installing some additional stuff now, so start with sorcery update. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Okay, that took way less time than I expected, actually. So then scribe update, double ampersand, cast smgl arch specs, just to update the spell lists or what other distros call mirror lists, and tell source3 the latest list for supported architectures. Already forgot the second half of that cast, smgl arch specs. This is my first time using cast for anything, so I'm going to be learning right along with the rest of y'all. Also not sure how long any part of this takes, so some of this could end up sped up and or just cut. Okay, I think I'm going to just not speed that portion up just so you can see how fast that flew by. Okay, so looking at this output, looks like there are no real dependencies getting updated or installed, so just that. Let's see if just leaving that blank counts as why, and it looks like it does. Okay, can't find art spec for x86-64. That is definitely not concerning at all. Now it looks like the art spec might just be 64 slash x86-64, maybe? Mentioned running sorcery, so I'm just going to do that. Option, maybe? See branch, color scheme, prompt delay, download, nice, you mask, email of sorcerer, feature menu, optimize architecture, is that it? Oh god. Okay, looks like that is it. Looks like x86-64 exists there, so... I'm just not even going to change any of these right this second. Let's just cancel and exit and exit and hope that this is going to be fine. Oh wait, sorcery was literally the next thing it says to do. Alright, so yes, sorcery option. And it doesn't really go into specifics for how to do any of that, so I'm just going to go with the defaults and see what happens. This looks like... I'm just going to pull up the man page for cast just to see what any of these flags do. Okay, so cast-c is telling it to compile most of those. Cache-r to reconfigure, which seemed to be what it was suggesting for the kernel. 
do. I'm just going to combine these two cast dash Cs into one and hope that doesn't break anything. So cast dash C, bin utils, GCC, get text, glibc, and elf utils. It's figuring out dependencies. Looks like this is going to pull in quite a bit, probably. Possibly incompatible update, that's great. So it looks like at the bare minimum, bin utils, bison, core utils, cpio, diff utils. Pretty sure you can read just as well as I can. Run the trigger? Yeah, sure. Run the trigger on Python 3? Yep. Just, just do whatever you want. I'm just going to answer yes for everything, unless I see a specific reason not to. And looks like the default here is the one that's already installed, so yes, that. See, with the beginner distro, it's always nice to see something with sane defaults where you can just blindly do whatever it's recommending and end up being completely fine. How oh, interesting. You know, significant change to how networking works. Have to build a file at C network interfaces. Won't break current network connections. Nothing will come up if you reboot. So must say yes to the following question or it will not install. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to say yes to that. Install FS trim. Sure. Enable. Sure. Recommended you answer yes. Sure. Sure. <laughs> So this is what's great about beginner distros is I can just completely turn my brain off during the install. Optional dependency, nah. Select local time zone. Actually, sure. Now, let's just start hitting page down. America. Yeah, Chicago's usually what central time is called for these. Select locales. I'll just let it build all. Why not? Alright, so there's the configuration done. So, bin utils, bison, core utils, CPIO. Again, y'all can read. So, yep, cast these. And since this is source-based, it could take a bit, especially because GCC and glibc were part of it. And I feel like both of those typically take a while. Also because I have, like, two threads for this VM, and I don't actually think I set up makeups that would have it use both of them, so... Yeah, this is probably just all going on one core right now. So yeah, just gonna cut recording, and this may or may not be an overnight run. Alright, so I let this run overnight, and it looks like everything installed successfully, and nearly everything with a check self trigger succeeded. I don't know nearly enough about Source Mage to say what Python 3 having this trigger fail means. Did install successfully apparently, so 
Let's just attempt some quick sanity checks. Okay, it now is what hex looks like. Knows what binary looks like. You know, one version of Python wants parentheses for print and the other doesn't. I don't use Python nearly enough to remember which is which, so 50-50 shot. All right, looks like three is the one that wants parentheses. So yeah, looks like that's working, so I'm just going to pretend that it didn't fail and see what's next up. Alright, so next step is apparently compiling the kernel, so kind of interested to see what configuration for that looks like on here. That was just called Linux, right? Yep. So let's go for the new tree. The latest five sounds good. Maintenance patches, sure. Yeah, let's just select both of these and see what happens. So I'm guessing commit is what I want. And exit, probably. Oh, conflicting patches, nice. So I'm guessing these are probably just both the same patch. Uh, let's deselect the one that doesn't say latest. Alright, so this will probably be fastest with something like menu config, but just for convenience, I think all mod config is probably what most distro kernels use, so that should work fine. I uh, don't have it update the bootloader because I don't think we installed one yet. I think that's the next step. Uh, let's Fulfill this dependency with the thing that is already installed. Init ramfs, most likely gonna need this because all mod config probably has the file system as a module. I have no idea what mtools is, so no. Lzop, let's just not and see what happens. And just keep going with defaults. Read line, sounds good. Didn't do anything fancy with LVM, so shouldn't need that. Didn't encrypt anything, so shouldn't need that. Stable sounds good. Init script, sure. Just install every init script and have all of them run. Because that definitely won't slow down boot times. And we're installing this as a beginner distro, so don't do the advanced user configuration. Let's not reset the config file. Kinda curious to see what a system without Linux PAM would look like, so sure. Just don't. Stable always sounds good. Stick with defaults. All right, do you want to cast these? And this will probably take a bit, so just gonna cut the recording again until it's done. All right, so building the kernel kind of took most of yesterday and included a bit of playing around with menu config, which I didn't really show, because it's easy enough, I figure any beginner can figure that out. A couple things I did notice, though. One, looking through sorcery, I couldn't really find where makeups or just a jobs flag would be. I came across C flags and some stuff with Ccache and just CC, but didn't actually find where the option is to make it use more than one thread. I think some things might have been using both for building, but I don't think the kernel actually did. And 
the other thing worth noting, it looks like it might clean up build artifacts in between kernel builds, which, I mean, you don't need to worry about shale artifacts breaking things, but it also makes the build take a lot longer. So, yeah, that was a bit of fun, but the kernel is built, so I think next up was bootloader, yep. So, it gives directions for Lilo, Grub2, and Grub2, but UEFI, and of the two BIOS options, Lilo seems to be fewer commands, so that's what I'm going to go with. So, cast-c Lilo. Presumably getting used to cast by this point in the installation. I'm pretty sure I am, at least. Optional dependency on LVM. No, because I'm not using LVM. Uh, gut text, sure. Yeah, yeah, bin 86, Lilo, char utils, yep, cast these. And just gonna pause recording until the stuff is done building with its various warnings. Great, so that was nice and fast. And I forgot to mention when I was talking about rebuilding and reconfiguring the kernel, but it did make sure that the file system that my one partition is on was built into the kernel as opposed to a module, so I'm not actually going to be making in init ram fs. So it looks like next step is just text editor to slash etsy slash there's my problem. That is not what the file's called. Lilo.conf. That's that's the one. Okay, so looks like it is expecting boot and root to be different partitions, which they are not in my case, so I am just going to see... interesting. Now actually looking closer at this, it looks like boot is the entire drive and root is just the root partition. Okay. Yeah, that seems right. I mean that X doesn't, but just gonna remove that and see what happens. I don't know what either of these two lines mean, so I'm just leaving them. Yes, I want it to prompt. I don't really care that much about the timeout. Now I'm just going to flip to another TTY to see what the contents of slash boot look like. Okay, looks like system.map just sim links to the latest one, so that's nice and nifty. Should be able to just point that to system.map. And this is not the kernel that I want it pointing to. Let's see if VMLin is, yep, similar simlink scenario. Yeah, should be able to just do that. And uh, hopefully this is fine. I have basically zero experience with Lilo, so I'm just kind of winging it right now. Yep, 
Interesting. This looks like disk equals slash dev slash wherever the hard drive is. BIOS equals OX80 is the thing that I need. Somewhere. And now let's just put it anywhere random. VDA, this is not bare metal at all. I already forgot what that said. Can I background this? No, I cannot. Yeah, there was something about OX80 in there. BIOS equals OX80. That was it. Alright, now let's try running Lilo. Okay, let's try the man page and look for max partitions. At least it's giving these helpful errors. Even tells you where to look for the answer. You now BIOS option is obsolete apparently. That's cool. Okay, let's try max partitions equals 15 and see what happens. Ooh, interesting. Oh yeah, VDA2 would be an illegal root specification. Why didn't I look closer at that? <laughs> VDA1, that is my single partition on this. Right, two warnings were issued. Actually, let's just rerun that and exits with code zero. That could be a good sign. Wait. Am I going insane, or why do I have slash boot slash boot? Slash boot what? I'm so confused. Why does that exist? <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to tell myself that that worked. Scroll past UEFI chef. Locale should be fine. I think, I think like all of those got generated earlier. Already selected a time zone because it prompted for that earlier. So now time to to see. Okay, I did still have a session going there. So just exit that. Reboot, and see what happens. I'm pretty much 50-50 on this working or Lilo not being a thing. Okay, we might have option 3 where Lilo kind of works. Kernel panic. Nice. Oh. Please append a correct root equals boot option. Here are the available partitions. Interesting. Yeah, come to think of it, I don't think that I built in, like, any drive controller stuff. So yeah, I think I will need in init ramfs. I think I will need to find my mouse. There we go. Right, just gonna cut recording while I get this back up and running. Right, so back in the cheroot, and let's just see. Was this the command? If it was, I don't have that. 
Tail to see, looks like Source Mage does not have user merge as a thing yet. Helps if I remember to type grep. So pretty much right now I'm just gonna look around, see if I have anything related to that installed, and it looks like... Honestly, I might just be misremembering the command, so... Just gonna do a quick little search here. This seems promising. Okay, so that was it. So let's just see what Gaze finds that's relevant to this. Interesting. Okay, so what was it? Gaze... No, just gaze what? CPIO. MK and RD, that seems promising. Yep, that seems to be what we want it. Okay, so... Built-in might be the only thing that's needed. So right now, just gonna poke around to try and find out... ...what I actually need. Okay, so how did that work? Okay. So let's try mkinetrd dash dash built in equals ahci aki, I guess. Just make sure there is an rd file called this. Okay, just Slash boot slash init rd, I guess. And kernel version 5.16.15. Okay, let's see if tutorials point is somehow helpful at all. Interesting, that was a nice waste of time. Alright, developer.ibm.com. That might go into far more detail than I actually need. Oh, I'm canned RD is apparently a shell script that Is good to know.
I was using built in a hundred percent wrong. The issue is just that the flag I was trying to pass doesn't exist for this implementation. Okay. See what happens. So I should probably look at Lilo.conf. Just free read the main page. Okay, it's that simple, just init RD equals. Cool, cool. already defined. And just double check that file name that I typed. Definitely recall telling it to make this. Five dot thirteen dot nineteen underscore one. back in because I forgot to rerun Lilo. Eh, yeah, that would be an issue. Generally helps to pass the right name. Right, so now reboot. Boot first HD, Lilo boot. That's a much longer loading bar. Definitely not concerning at all. Lilo, you, you good there? Right, so that was definitely not right.
Oh, very interesting. Oh, wait. Didn't read in yet. That's why it seems weird. See what happens if I add dash F. That continues to do absolutely nothing, so that's pretty great. Try something real stupid there. for boss mode. If it is, that's not how you do it. Actually come to think of it. This have for boss mode at all? Nope. Because for boss input scares beginners. Yeah, let's try rebooting again, see what happens. In other words, try pretty much the same thing and expect a different result. Although I feel like that's more dots than we got last time, so... Progress, maybe? Is this just Source Mage's... Equivalent to the splash screens that other beginner distros do. Yeah, I'm just going to reconfigure the kernel to just add that as built in. And y'all don't need to watch menu config, so given how long this kernel's been taking to build, I will resume recording tomorrow. Alright, so found that last thing that needed to be built into the kernel as opposed to a module, and now we are at the login screen. Kind of appreciate the retro aesthetic they go for here. Like, a lot of beginner distros try to go for just the shiniest, fanciest thing that they can, so it's kind of a breath of fresh air to see something like this. 
So I'm just going to log in as root since I haven't actually made a non-root user. Gives this nice prompt for things to do after the first boot, which is really nice. It's always nice when a distro gives you a little welcome like this. And even logged in, still going for this nice retro aesthetic, which I appreciate. It's nice seeing a distro that doesn't try to appeal with just the shiniest thing that it can put out there. So yeah, since I don't plan on keeping this long term, I probably won't do any of those post boot things. But back to normal distro review stuff now that we're done with the quick and easy install process. So I think kernel is something people typically look at. I know 5.16 is a reasonably current branch. I think my host is just running like a 5.15 kernel, so 5.16 is pretty new. I think 5.16.15 is pretty new within that branch, so nice up-to-date kernel. Pretty sure HTOP is something that gets checked, but this is sort of a minimal distro, so HTOP does not appear to be pre-installed. So let's just look at free dash H. Okay, this is not the free that I'm used to, so let's show it in megabytes. Okay, I think this is the first time that I've had a distro not mount proc on boots. So that is that is a choice that this distro has made. So yeah, it looks like it's only using like 32 megs of the roughly 4 gigs that I gave this. So really lightweight. Try matching this on Windows. And I think something else that people usually look at with these just for reviews is what's pre-installed. So let's see what's in slash bin first. Type that into less. So this is honestly just standard core utilities. I, I don't know why I checked slash bin first. Try user bin. That might have some other stuff. So it has BC, the basic calculator, pre installed. C and CC, so there are compilers. CastFS, which I'm guessing is related to the package manager. CPAN, which I'm pretty sure is Perl's package manager. See, a lot of standard stuff. I think I determined that VI and Vim do not exist. GrodV exists. I have no idea what GrodV is but it exists. <laughs> See, it looks like only text editor we have is Nano. So that's... I mean, not my preference, but it's fine for beginners. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else people typically look at with distro reviews. I mean, default UI is a nice retro command line interface. The login screen was nice and pretty, at least in my opinion. Other people might not like that sort of retro appearance, but I think it was kind of nice. 
the install process was straightforward enough when I wasn't trying to do advanced things like using Internet RamFS. The package manager is pretty straightforward, kind of like this whole mage thing they got going. Also, I just realized what this nun is. My host name didn't take properly, did it? Oh well, that's fine. Yeah, all in all, I'd say this is a solid choice for a first distro. Might even be better than Ubuntu at this point. And I would give it a solid five robes out of seven witch hats, so a perfect score. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Leave a comment if you decide to try out Source Mage, and uh, have a nice rest of your day.